day in ordinary time. And in today's gospel, Jesus reminds us, Stay awake, for you, for you know neither the day nor the time when the bridegroom shall come to bring his bride and their guests into the banquet. So the Lord asks us to be prepared and, that, and for this eternal banquet in his kingdom and that the best way to prepare is to build a relationship with Jesus. In this Eucharistic sacrifice, let us ask for the grace to be always awake and alert, prepared for the, Lord, pre prepared for the Lord's coming with lighted torches of a life spent in faithful service to him. And let us also continue to pray for our beloved dead, that the Lord will continue to invite them into the feast of eternal life. Sisters and brothers, as we prepare to participate in the banquet of Christ's love, let us ask ourselves if we are properly disposed to welcome him in our hearts. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them, but the wise brought flasks of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight there was a cry, Behold the bridegroom! Come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for there may not be enough for us and you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. In his book entitled, Always Wear Clean Underwear, the rabbi Mark Gelman talks about the importance of many things that our parents have always reminded us of. Things like always wear clean underwear so that when you meet an accident and they have to take off your clothes, they see clean underwear. Or eat your vegetables, do not pee in the pool, and of course, do your homework. And this is what he has to say about doing your homework. He says, the kids who do best in school are not the ones who kiss up to the teacher or the ones who are the most popular or the ones who join the most clubs. The kids who do best in school are the ones who do their homework. They are the ones who understand that learning means practicing what somebody told you and it means thinking about what somebody told you, and it means reading things somebody told you to read, and all these things happen at home rather than in school. Now as you grow up, you will soon learn that kids who did their homework do better when they get out of school than kids who didn't do their homework. The people who do best don't just go to their jobs, they get ready for their jobs. These are the people who go home and think and plan and get new ideas which they bring to work with their lunch the next day. They are the people who have learned the big lesson of homework. Prepare for everything you do. 
So that's why your parents are always on you about doing your homework. They want you to learn how to know what's going on before it goes on. To be that kind of person, there are no shortcuts. You need to do your homework. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, in today's gospel, Jesus tells us the parable of the ten virgins who took their lamps and eagerly awaited the arrival of the bridegroom. Five of the ten virgins did their homework. They trimmed their lamps and brought flasks of oil with them along with their lamps. The other five were foolish, for, si for they simply went to the place of encounter only with their lamps. Unfortunately, the bridegroom arrived late and the foolish virgins found that they were running out of oil. So they begged the wise virgins to share some of their oil, but they refused. And so the foolish virgins were forced to leave their post to buy some oil for their lamps, which were about to go off. Unfortunately, while they were out, the bridegroom arrived and took the virgins who were ready to the feast with, with him, locking out the foolish virgins and leaving them in the dark. Perhaps some of us, upon hearing this parable, may have wondered why the five wise virgins did not share the oil that when perhaps there was more than enough for all for their lamps. We don't know how much oil that they had, but perhaps there might be a little more than enough for their lamps. Some of us may have also thought that having the door of the wedding banquet slammed in the faces of the five foolish virgins is too severe as consequence. After all, they struggled to stay up late and did not leave their post and patiently waited for the groom to arrive when he was late. Not they only had to leave because they were running out of oil. Hindi ba pwedeng pagalitan lang sila? Kailangan bang ipagtabuyan sila? But today's parable, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, is simply is not simply about forgetting to bring along extra oil for our lamps. Rather, it is about how we view the invitation extended to us to take our place in the kingdom of God. Gusto ba natin talaga o hindi? The wise virgins did not share their oil because it is something that cannot be shared. Why can't it be shared? Because the oil represents our love for Christ. And we cannot share our love for Christ. It is something personal. It is something that we nurture. The foolish virgins were most foolish because because they thought that the oil is something to be possessed, something that could be purchased at the last minute. Ay, kailangan pala mahalin si Kristo. Pengi nga na siyang konting pagmamahal para mabigyan ko si Kristo. Ganun ba yon? But the relationship takes a lifetime to build. And the wise virgins who brought oil were deeply devoted to their duty of meeting the groom and they wanted to meet the groom that they prepared for it that they did their homework. The foolish virgins were mindless. Do your homework. Being ready beforehand is what matters most. When Jesus says, therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour, he simply does not mean that we should not fall asleep. We have to be prepared. We have to do our homework. And what should we do? An essential part of the Christian life is to cultivate a personal relationship with God. Let us not forget that, to cultivate a personal relationship with God. Every Christian is called to have a relationship with Christ, to nurture it and to deepen it day by day. Such relationship cannot simply be borrowed at the last minute like the oil in today's parable. We just have to do our homework. We have to work on that relationship. 
and there is no better way of achieving this than by, stay, by, than by spending moments of quiet with the Lord, sharing our thoughts with Him, sharing our plans, our concerns, and the many worries that we have. We can nurture and deepen our relationship with Christ in prayer, telling Him what's in our mind and asking Him for guidance and inspiration. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, Christ is always prepared to meet us. So on our part, we must also be prepared to meet Him. He does not set an appointment for this encounter, but comes as He wills into our lives. But the good news is, even if we do not know, He just not, it's not yung pagdating po niya, ang pagdating niya sa buhay natin ay hindi one time, big time sa dulo. The good news is that Christ always comes. He desires to be with us every moment of our lives. So every moment, He comes into our lives. The question is, are we prepared to meet Him? Do we want to meet Him? Do we really bother to have a relationship with Him? That is the question. Today's first reading from the Book of Wisdom says this about wisdom, which is the knowledge and the love of God. She is readily perceived by those who love her and found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known in anticipation of their desire. Whoever watches for her at dawn shall not be disappointed, for he shall find her sitting by his gate. In other words, my dear sisters and brothers in Christ, the Lord is always ready and wanting to meet us every moment. The, however, the encounter will only happen if we are prepared, if we ready ourselves, and if we open ourselves to meet Christ. Ang problema, we are the ones who shut the door. Rabbi Mark Gelman ends his essay on homework with these words. Letting somebody else do your homework is a bad deal. No, we do that sometimes. If other people do your homework for you, it's just a form of cheating. And they are helping a cheater, which is almost as bad as being a cheater. If you let your parents help you with your homework, that's fine. But if you let your parents draw the map of Italy that you are supposed to make for your social studies class, that's not fine. They will be cheating you out of the chance to learn how to do it yourself. Then later in your life, let's say you are trying to get hired as the president of a big company and you have a real good chance of getting the job. At the last interview, Let's say they sit you down and tell you, we like you a lot and we would really like to hire you for this big job. But there is one thing we would like you to do. Could you please draw a map of Italy? And you will have to say to all those people, I'm sorry, but you see, when I was in fourth grade, I was given a homework to draw a map of Italy for my social studies class but my mom made the map for me, so I never learned how. And then they will say, too bad, you can't be president of our company, goodbye. And this happens a lot, so do your homework. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, when Jesus says, therefore stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour, he simply does not ask us to sit down and wait for the day of his coming. He asks us to do the necessary work of spending time with him daily, of praying over his words, of living out his commands, of deepening our relationship with him. And no one else can do this for us. Also, our love for Christ does not happen overnight, much less at the last minute. It is nurtured and deepened over a lifetime. 
And the kingdom of God is really all about living forever with the one we have learned to love in our lifetime. So go ahead, do your homework. Prepare for the time when he shall come and bring us to his kingdom to live with him forever. And as usual, I will give you your homework. And it's very timely that the theme of our celebration today is do your homework. So I hope you will do your homework. It is said that our most important relationship is our relationship with God. And we are asked to embrace God every day, to embrace Jesus every day. And the best way we can do that is through prayer. No, unfortunately, many of us, if you look at your prayers, they are mostly prayers of petition. They are mostly asking for favors, asking for help. There is nothing wrong with that. But I think prayer must also be spent, some prayer must be spent uh, trying to strengthen your relationship with the Lord. So for this week, at the end of each day this week, I would like you to do this, to ask yourselves and to converse with the Lord. Lord, today ba, napalapit ba ako sa iyo or napalayo? No, but it can be both. What are the moments in this day kung saan ako napalayo sa iyo at bakit ako napalayo sa iyo? And for that, we ask for forgiveness. And we also thank the Lord for those moments that we feel na napalapit tayo sa Panginoon. When a friend called us or when, or when, somebody, when somebody said a kind word to us that we felt very good about ourselves and it's the Lord telling you, I am happy with you. At napapalayo tayo whenever we refuse to be loving persons, when we refuse to help someone who comes in need, when we refuse to forgive somebody who asks for our forgiveness, so on and so forth. And then, at the, at the end of your prayer, you ask for the grace that you need so that you can become closer to God the next day. So let your prayer this week be prayers of, 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 of deepening your relationship with Christ rather than prayers of petition that we usually say. Okay? So please do your homework. Let us all.